Welcome back gang, Todd here. And I've got a little impromptu video here for you. Uh, this is dealing with my open source scan converter I just received uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, this guy right here, if you're not familiar with it, it's developed by a fellow named uh, Marks out of Finland. Uh, this is an open source, basically upscaler, uh, so you can connect your classic computers and video game systems too. Uh, one of the really nice things about this unit is the fact that it suffers from no lag. It has a sub one millisecond processing. So for you guys that are used to using the FrameMeister, for example, which I believe has around a 20, 24 millisecond frame, uh, a little bit of lag in there, a little more than one frame of lag. Uh, and then once you combine it with your LCD, if you're using it with an LCD, then you've added more onto it. So by the time you're done with it, you've potentially got two plus frames of lag, which a lot of people don't like. Uh, whereas this guy right here essentially has zero lag. Uh, I've been testing it with, let me zoom back out here a bit. I've been testing it uh, over this weekend with a couple different machines. Uh, up front I've got my Japanese Saturn, which I've been testing with RGB of course. Uh, in the back, back here, is my RGB modded PC Engine Duo R. Um, to the left is my RGB modded AV Famicom. And up front, which is what I have hooked up right now, is my PAL Amiga 1200. Uh, I've been testing it with all those different machines over the course of the weekend and I've had really great luck, great success. Uh, get excellent picture quality out of the unit. Um, I don't have an HDMI or DVI video capture device right now, so I can't do any direct video capture, so unfortunately this is as good as it gets. But um, let's take a little closer look at the hardware. This is not a full video review, that will come eventually. I'm testing it right now with this different hardware because I want to make sure that before I make a review, I want to make sure I have a fair hardware testing. This isn't going to be one of those deals where I test it with one console and go, yeah man, thumbs up, awesome. No, I want to make sure I have a a wide gamma hardware test. And I've got a whole bunch more stuff to test. I want to test with a Super Nintendo and Genesis and uh, PlayStation, Dreamcast, whatever I can throw at it. So let's get a little closer to the hardware. Let me move some stuff out of the way here. Okay, on the front, um, up close, let me get a little closer here. Just focus, there we go. Uh, on the front, there's two buttons. Uh, these two buttons, uh, the one on the left, essentially just changes inputs. Let's all let's focus here. Focus. There we go. Uh, you can go through the different inputs. This thing has three different inputs, and each one of those has different modes as far as uh, what kind of signal it will take. For example, right now I have my Omega 1200 hooked into the Euro SCART input on the back, and as you can see, looking at the display, let me focus here. Uh, it tells us we're on AV1, which is SCART. It has the input is RGBS, which is red, green, blue with uh, sync, composite sync. Uh, 313p, so that's our resolution. Uh, and then we have our vertical horizontal uh, scan rates. And as you can tell, look at this, uh, this is a 50 hertz machine, so it's a PAL unit. Uh, let's go around to the side here. Let me just turn this around here a little bit. We have our power input right here. Up on top, we have a toggle switch for power. We have a VGA input. Um, curious thing about this VGA input is this will allow for, I believe, according to documentation, I haven't tested this yet. This is one of the things I want to include in the final video review. But it'll do 15, 31, and 24 kilohertz inputs on that. So I'm really curious whether or not I can pipe the X68000 into this and have all three different video modes get properly scaled up uh, to the video out. Well, 31 won't need to be scaled, but 15 and 24 most certainly will be, because uh, I'm using just a regular old you know, Dale VGA monitor here, 1080p panel. So uh, yeah, there's that. Then on the back side, turn this around here. We have component inputs. Uh, so you could pipe in like a PS2 or something similar. Uh, we have your SGART. And as far as outputs go, you have DVI, and then you have a little stereo audio mini jack over there for audio. Uh, depending on the version you buy, if you buy a pre-assembled version like I do, like I did, because uh, you can buy it in either kit form or pre-assembled version. If you buy a pre-assembled version, it comes with DVI output. However, I believe, I don't know if this is still the case, but at one time they were offering the kit version with HDMI output. And you might ask yourself why they do that. Well, that's because of licensing restrictions. Uh, HDMI, the HDMI bordering, I guess the 
the group that, board, that uh, governs over the HDMI certifications and stuff says if you sell a device with HDMI output, it needs to, you basically need to pay royalties for it, which, from what I understand, it's not cheap. However, if you sell something that's in kit form, you need to pay those royalties. I believe that was the case, so you, know, you can buy this thing with HDMI output in a kit form, or if you buy a pre assembled version, you get it with DVI. Uh, not a big deal for me. Imagine for most people it's not, although HDMI would have been pretty nice to have just HDMI out. Uh, but that is what it is. Um, also has on the front, it has a, um, a JTAG connector, because uh, this is an FB, FPGA based device and you can flash uh, updated cores to it from that. And also, on the bottom here, I don't know if you can really see, let me see if I can focus in on there. There's a little, right um, underneath here, there's a micro SD slot, also for updating your firmware. So uh, that's pretty cool. I've been testing this with a wide range of um, inputs off my different devices. And so far, yeah, it's ran pretty much everything flawlessly. Uh, in the menus, because it comes with, if you buy it, you can buy it with a remote. Uh, this is kind of a one of those universal type remotes. This isn't like a specific to this device. It's not like they custom made it. This is just some probably like $2 Chinese remote, but <laughs> you can, um, Make adjustments so you can go into the menu. So let me zoom in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but using the remote here, you can bring up options on the menu, and you can go through some of the different settings. And there's a wide range of settings on this to adjust. There's nowhere near as many as there is on the Frame Meister, but that's also one of the nice things about this unit is the fact that it doesn't require nearly as much fiddling about to get a good signal. Whereas with the Frame Meister, you have to Pretty much every input you have to fiddle with it to get the sync up or to get a good picture quality of it. Uh, it has the second button I forgot to mention on the menu. There's the second button up here. This toggles scan lines. So you can turn scan lines on and off. You can set it to auto or you can force them on and off. Uh, so on the front of the unit you only have the two buttons. Basically changing input and turning scan lines off and on. So really, if you want to make any adjustments to the unit, you have to use the remote control. You have to have some sort of remote control. And this uses, uh, I believe, NEC codes. So if you have a remote control, like a universal, like a Harmony remote or something that uses NEC codes, you can control this device. All right, guys, that's about it for this one. This is just a, like I said, this was just a real fast video of something to give you kind of a, you know, a, a quick preview of this device. Um, so far in my testing, I'm extremely pleased with it. Uh, for the price they charge for this, which that's another good thing, this unit isn't very expensive. It ran shipped uh, with the remote control about a hundred and a power supply uh, about 180 euros, so a little over 200 uh, or 180 pounds. Sorry, me, a little over 180 pounds, so a bit over 200 US dollars. So it's a lot cheaper than buying a Frame Meister. So there's that. Anyways, guys, that's about it for this one. This is just a quick little preview of the OSSC. If you like this video thumbs up, hit subscribe, leave a comment below, Just tell me what you'd like to see in the final OSSC video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.